On March 12, a 76-year-old man from Kalaburgi, Karnataka, who had a travel history to the Middle East, became the first fatality due to COVID-19 in India. Then came the big decision to put India under lockdown. The decision was praised as a bold one and the only available solution to curb the spread of the infection. But it had a devastating impact on the informal sector of the economy. The lockdown stranded thousands of migrant workers in Delhi who were struggling to survive while taking the long route home, while others were living their life on the road, queuing for handouts and risking mass infections. Although citizens largely stayed at home, there were many who broke the curfew and were severely punished. There were other methods that the police resorted to to keep people in line. But despite all the efforts of authorities, a gathering of public activities in Delhi led to India's first cluster outbreak. cases reducing. In fact, cases in India kept rising. We have over 9,000 cases now. The worry seems to be this. The rate of addition of new cases, we're adding 700 plus and that number seems to be hovering around that figure. We need to bring that down to single digits. Again, the problem areas, the problem states, you can take a look at the, the, the states that are over a thousand cases. Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu and Delhi. Maharashtra in particular was worrying given its high population density and the rapid spread of the virus in slum areas. Amidst the gloom and doom, there were a few good Samaritans. One of them, after Sonu Soon, emerged as a real life hero. Soon India was facing the devastating impact of COVID-19 lockdown on the economy and so India announced a limited unlock in June. But despite precautions, India crossed a grim milestone even as the cases continued to rise. By August, India started living back to normalcy as most local businesses were up and running in India. September brought the news Indians were waiting for. India had surpassed its peak as the active cases began to fall in India. With cases in India taking a low dive, the focus now shifted towards vaccination. Global vaccine makers rushed with their research and trials to perfect the COVID-19 vaccine. India too saw a glimmer of hope with the Serum Institute of India's tie-up with AstraZeneca and Bharat Biotech to develop India's indigenous vaccine against COVID-19. November saw a flurry of activity on the vaccine end with several vaccines reporting over 90% efficacy in their phase 3 trials. By the end of the year, UK became the first country to approve the emergency use of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine against COVID-19 and started the inoculation drive in the nation. The new year brought new hopes as India began the world's largest vaccination drive. Yep. After the vaccination drive began in India, it next focused on philanthropic efforts and began sending the COVID-19 vaccine to countries around the world with a message of friendship. By early February, India had managed to reduce its active cases tally to below 1,40,000 cases. But starting February 11, the number of active cases were on the rise again. Experts point towards a waxing hesitancy among people and flouting of COVID-19 norms. While the opposition parties questioned the approval of Bharat Biotech vaccine, PM Modi took his first shot of Made in India co vaccine to instill confidence and encourage people to go out and take their vaccines. But just a week before the first anniversary of the lockdown, Maharashtra government announced lockdown in Nagpur due to the growing cases of COVID 19 in the state.